Hello YouTube, this is just a very short intro because I have made several videos and I noticed I did not have a beginning segment. Uh, please be aware that when the CNC late is running it's getting loud. So uh, I will try to compensate for it but uh, I'm not sure if, it, if I'm gonna be successful with it. So be wary that parts of the video will be loud. So without further ado, please uh, enjoy the video, it has many segments about this and more. Here I'm cutting cut out I'm cutting a cutout for a square tool. Well that's the tool holder I'm cutting and this is the top part. After that I will raise it again from the bottom. So I have the 12 mm height that I need and then I need to draw additional three holes here, tap them so I can use it to Hold the tool. So that's this part. More to follow. Okay, I don't remember if I mentioned this, but this will be my first tool holder. And um, sorry, here I'm milling the second row for it to go in here. Just so you know how it's gonna look like. Of course, I'm not leaving this on while I'm milling this. Milling, cutting, drilling. What you do with the lathe. Uh, anyway, so that's the second row. And, uh, well, let's just for the fun of it, do it. So here I'm turning on my spindle. <laughs> you're wondering or asking yourself why I'm doing this like this because I don't have a 12 millimeter bit so I can do it in uh, one pass or in one work flow whatever so that's a six millimeters and I'm doing it twice and since if I would do it in the position resting on the on the compound um it would be in the center but obviously i need the bit not in the center 
but I need it in the center of the bit here on the drill bit. I mean, people that know lathes will know what I'm talking about. So that's why I had to raise it first three millimeters and then raise it again nine millimeters. And then if I take this out and mount it directly on here, it will be just the right uh, height to be in the center. And we will see that of course. So on to the next part or next step. I don't know if this counts for something, but I think this is like the V8 of the CNC lathe. I would have expected this thing to... I mean, you see how rough this surface is. And uh, that's definitely a rounded surface as well on the edge. And uh, it, stick on, it sticks on there. So, I like it. Let's advance it to half thou. Start it up. Okay, this is another segment of me making my tool holder and getting some dots of oil on my glasses. Anyway, <clears throat> you want to train? See a train pass by? Anyway, Peter, I'm waiting for your feedback. I need to clean those glasses. It's all fuzzy now. <clears throat> oh, I can see. So, this is what I have now. And uh, this is actually a piece of aluminum from my CNC mill that I built uh, back in 2015. And I don't believe it's, I can't believe it's so much time passed by already. So anyway, you saw me, I don't know which segment I put in the front or the back. Uh, please bear with me. So anyway, I milled this with two passes of 6mm uh, four flute drill bit or milling bit. And um, perfect fit you know, some might say it's uh, too tight it should have more room to the to the top but uh, I can always make it wider so the next step is drilling three holes tapping them so I can mount it in here <clears throat> uh, it is kind of long I might shorten it I'm not sure yet um, because I will also drill a hole in here well this I have to offset uh, while milling because I need the tip in the center of the chuck obviously you know that um, so now that that is finished I can just mount it regularly on the compound 
and then just drill it with a 12 millimeter drill bit uh, with a regular one doesn't matter and then I'm gonna mount this guy on here I have a 12 millimeter shaft that's gonna go in the hole again with a set screw I have the flats here well that's for the shaft but I will have a flat spot on the shaft as well and so I can put that mounted in here and then this I can use for drilling into material obviously I have different sizes of chucks here of collets not chuck collets it's the ER 20, 20 I think yes it is so then I can use any other drill bit to drill holes and I will also drill another hole for the internal um, cutting tool bit uh, please excuse me I don't always remember the correct terminology but uh, this will be also put in here through a hole and then with a set screw I might do two set screws probably yeah I can do that so I can use that and that will be my uh, initial tool holder till I make something else but I think this will work nicely I can with the holes also um, to a certain extent move it or put it on an angle and uh, anyway this is uh, another part so next will be drilling the holes and tapping them so I can finally run my CNC mill uh, yeah CNC lathe and um, show you how it cuts steel stainless steel or at least I think it's stainless steel I got a piece I got from a friend and anyway I'm very happy with this it was a bit of a playing around to I had to lift it three millimeters for the top and then lift it six millimeters for the bottom to be milled so obviously if you had a 12 millimeter drill bit you could just uh, drill bit milling bit um, you could just add it in the correct height which would have been probably 4.5 millimeters then difference between three and six and have it done in one one way but I didn't have any so but I like it that I will doesn't bother me it doesn't bother the function it goes on here this one is a little tighter because I have a few screws holes in there or not holes but just set screws from my other cheap um, tool holder made those marks anyway I also had the cutting off tool, cut off tool that's a little tighter so as you see you don't always get I actually it's that thing again it's supposed to be 12 millimeters your mileage will vary uh, I also printed 3d printed this little holder here uh, if anybody is interested let me know I will share it it has six square and two round holes anyway on to the next step I see you in a bit till later okay this is another short segment of my of me cutting some unknown steel that was given to me and uh, that's how it, uh, it looked before and this is what I cut down and uh, I do get some chatter first of all this is a fairly inexpensive bit and uh, I know these things go up to 30 40 50 dollars each and these were like probably five bucks for ten or something like that so bear that in mind 
and uh, I will use my machine mainly for cutting aluminum aluminum so this um, result is perfectly acceptable to me and this is not a finishing tip either and uh, I'm obviously not a professional uh, with the speeds and feet and whatever and uh, whatever needs to be set up properly so anyway and one other thing I wanted to show I found this very nice holder for the key chuck key chuck key chuck key <laughs> so this is the one I have and goes in here it's wiggle free so uh, if you're interested I will put a link in the description I did download it I did not design it myself I did design this one here and I will probably mount it here somewhere not sure yet so anyway without further ado let's get another finishing pass and uh, here we go <laughs> That's the beauty of a CNC. I mean, this thing is turning <laughs> and it's moving. So, as I said, I'm not sure if the for the finishing, if I should go faster, slower, but uh, this is what I have. And anyway, here are some chips from this material that I cut so it can cut I know they should break I know that but uh, I mean give me a break so but it does cut way deeper uh, than what's here it's obviously a finishing um, finishing pass and I want to get a bit a round bit that are used for finishing pieces and yet I even saw some videos where much more professional uh, lathe and people that are using used like sandpaper to get a finishing touch on it so anyway I'm happy with that with this and my next step will be to cut my tool holder obviously no make no sense to having it this far back and then I will use this back part for this uh, collect holder. It's a ER20. I think I showed it before. And for smaller ER11 for smaller bits. These were then once this one is mounted here, it will be like that. And the beauty is I can home the machine and set it to a certain um point and then i will drill from here into the aluminum uh, like you've seen before when i milled this part out here and once i drill it it will be perfectly center so anyway this was just another segment on to the next one uh, actually sorry i was showing the wrong axis uh, so this is the feet I'm using and I can of course go much much slower than that
and uh, can't even see it moving with us anyway sorry about the I, sh I showed this here and that goes also slow of course and even slower Yeah, you can't even see it moving I mean, only here anyway on to the next segment okay here I'm going to drill a 8 millimeter hole um, well it's gonna be expanded to 12 or extended to 12 but I want to start with 8 and see how it goes I did cut this from this piece so this will be my single tool holder and uh, this will be my tool holder for the ER20 collect holder and for the ER11 it is yes collect holder so basically I'm gonna drill a hole and then I'm gonna use this 12 millimeter shaft to mount the collect to here which you will see and then with two set screws on the top but uh, before we get there let's see if we can break something Definitely need more RPM. Let me set it up. Although I can do it right there. What did I have? 800. Let's make it. To <laughs> so I'm trying to do this up here. But somehow if you don't click the box right it just turns the spindle on and off so here I can of course input 1200 rpm and then use my pendant to turn on the spindle <laughs> was a little bit too fast well I will drill the hole off camera so I can control it better and I see you when the hole is done so reducing the speed a little bit and some adding some WD-40 lubricant we made it through the hole and now I will first try the 8 millimeter pin that I have over here I have to move it further down I think I need three hands Oops, here I am.
Okay. The very minimal play. That is fine because that's gonna be for the small one. That's gonna be then mounted like this. Of course, have to tie it down. So anyway, on to the 12 millimeter hole, which then, I say, as I said, will use this 12 millimeter shaft to mount that, or use it for my boring bar. All right, correct. So then I can also put the boring bar in here. Oh. I have to I'm looking at where I'm going and not on the through the phone so that's why um, anyway mount the boring bar and then I can do boring operations so anyway on to the next segment actually come to think of it it does have more play than I want. Of course, if I tighten it down, it's not gonna have any play, but I want to have this tighter. So on the actual eight millimeter hole that I'm gonna drill further up here, I will drill to 7.5 and use a reamer to uh, get the eight millimeters, which then this shaft will perfectly fit. And then of course, again, be uh, tightened down with set screws um, actually I'm using regular uh, hex, hex nut screws so I'm not using the how you call them, the ones without the head so I have these and they work fine um, so the only problem is of course I do not have an 8 millimeter reamer nor do I have a 12 millimeter reamer so <laughs> um, and I don't think uh, this is for thread cutting of course that much I know uh, I don't think I can use this boring head to bore out the hole which technically I could if I would have a smaller one but uh, this is gonna produce a bigger hole than 12 millimeter. I'm pretty sure of that. So a small hiccup. Um, I'm not sure if I can find any reamers here in Bulgaria. Might have to order them, but at least, at least, at least, at least, I can cut with my tool holder uh, machine. Uh, turn, turn, not cut, turn. Um, the only major problem I have is I don't have any aluminum stock so I have to find some aluminum stock so anyway this was another segment on to the next one